research makes use of previous information and data from statements of experts, which are written in various sources such as books, journals, and computer databases. These data are utilized both for qualitative and quantitative researches. Greetings, senior high school students! Welcome to another research adventure! I am Teacher Jerry, and I will be your learning guide for today's session. After the preliminary parts of your research have been completed, it's time that you select related literature that include information which are authoritative and relevant to the topic of your study. Before we proceed to lesson proper, let's have first an activity. Imagine you are in a library browsing through its books and resource collections. List 10 possible resources that you can use in your chosen study. Write your answers on a separate paper. You have 30 seconds to do it. Ready? The possible resources in your chosen study which you can get from the library are the following. Books, journals, periodicals, newspapers, government documents, biographical sources, videos, archives or special collections, research reports, monographs, computerized databases, conference proceedings, thesis and dissertations, empirical studies, and statistical handbook. If you listed the words that I mentioned, that means you already have an idea about the various resources in the library, which will be helpful to you in your research journey. This time, I will present statements. Write true if the statement is correct and false if the statement is wrong. Let's start. 1. Preparing literature review involves searching for reliable, accurate, and up-to-date material on the topic or subject. 2. Materials are not necessarily relevant to the study. Three, journals, which are usually published monthly, quarterly, or biannually, fall under primary sources. Four, literature review is done to ensure that you're not reinventing the wheel. Five, scoping provides a quick overview of current studies. Students, you are awesome if you got a perfect score. If you did not get the correct answers, don't worry. By attentively listening in our discussion, you will do better in the next activity. What is a literature review? And why do we need to properly select relevant studies for our paper? A literature review provides an overview of what has been written about a specific topic. The review of literature includes practically all the information and data which are authoritative and relevant to the topic of the study, as in the case of research and similar scholarly undertakings. 
The literature can cover a range of sources, namely journal articles, monographs, computerized databases, conference proceedings, thesis and dissertations, empirical studies, government reports and reports from other bodies, historical records, and statistical handbooks. Since there are varying sources from which you can deduce, base, and derive literature review, here are some questions that can help lead you to your choice. 1. Have you clearly indicated the scope and purpose of the review? 2. Have you included a balanced coverage of what is available? 3. Have you included enough materials to show the development and limitations in this area? 4. Have you included the most recent and relevant studies? 5. Have you indicated the source of the literature by referencing accurately? And 6. Have you used mostly primary sources or appropriate secondary sources? Why do a literature review? Literature reviews may be a great way to help you come up with enriching your research idea. There are also means of ensuring that your idea has not been researched on by someone else. Hence, there is a need to conduct a literature review. Dempster and Hannah 2016 provide some reasons why a review is done. These are the following. First, to indicate the research that has been conducted in the area before, to ensure that you're not reinventing the wheel. Second, to demonstrate that you're aware of important and recent studies in your study area. This way, you ensure that you haven't missed an important study that makes your research idea seem less brilliant than you first imagined. Third, to ensure that you haven't missed literature detailing a novel way for you to conduct your study or pointing you to a data collection tool that is most appropriate for your study. Fourth, to explain the theoretical background to your proposed research project. And fifth, to demonstrate your ability to critically analyze the literature in your study area. This indicates that your research idea is based on a good understanding of previous research in the area. And it also demonstrates your ability to highlight the existing gap or any disagreements in the research areas that your study addresses. What are the kinds of literature reviews? 1. Traditional. This is also referred to as narrative literature review. It provides a quick overview of current studies. It helps explain why your study is important in the context of the literature and can also help you identify areas that need further research. 2. Integrative This review synthesizes findings from different approaches. This approach allows integration of qualitative with quantitative studies. 3. Syntactic this review synthesizes high-quality empirical information to answer a given research question. 4. Scoping This review involves a broad research question that explores the current evidence base. It can help inform areas that are appropriate for a systematic review. Now, what are the characteristics of a good literature review? 1. Materials must be as recent as possible. This is important because of the changes that are going on. Sources to be looked into must give information that are attuned to the time frame indicated in the study. 2. Materials must be as objective and as unbiased as possible. Avoid data and materials which are extremely one-sided. 3. Materials must be relevant to the study. 
whatever kind of materials is needed to explain or support the study must have a bearing on the topic. 4. Materials must not be too few but not too many. Use your discretion on how much or many to include, but there should be enough materials included for the researcher to be able to offer insights on the study. The availability of materials will also be a determining factor. The other element in selecting relevant materials for the literature review is the types of sources with which you have to be familiar with. Searching for information related to the research being undertaken needs time and should be well thought of. The sources can be classified into the following. Primary sources, publications in which researchers report the results of their studies. Findings are communicated by the authors directly to the readers. Most materials that fall under this type are journals, which are usually published monthly, quarterly, or biannually. Each article deals with a particular research or study. Secondary sources. These are publications in which authors describe the work of others. Textbook is a familiar example of this type. This is also used for different courses offered in the curriculum. Other examples used are encyclopedias, research reviews, and yearbooks. With the easy accessibility to the use of computers, they have become one of the rich sources for writing a review of literature. They are available in school libraries and most public libraries. Various online computer terminals are linked to one or more retrieval systems that draw from a number of databases. A most commonly used database is Education Resources Information Center. Information that can be located are from data that date back to 1966. Printouts can be obtained from the search engine for the desired references. A vast reservoir of information on all sorts of topics is the World Wide Web, which is part of the internet. You can locate information on various topics with just a few clicks of the mouse button. A literature review will try to look for as much material as possible of this existing research. It will review major scholarly books in the relevant area, but will also take a keen interest in journal articles, which in many subjects give more up-to-date material. Preparing a literature review thus involves, first, searching for reliable, accurate, and up-to-date material on the topic or subject. Second, reading and summarizing the key points from this literature. Third, synthesizing these key ideas, theories, and concepts into a summary of what is known. Fourth, discussing and evaluating these ideas, theories, and concepts. Fifth, identifying particular areas of debate or controversy, and six, preparing the ground for the application of these research ideas to new research. Now that you know the important things to bear in mind when selecting relevant literature, you are ready for an activity. Understand the statements that I will read and write the letter of the correct answer. One. The following are some reasons a review is done. Except Two, it is considered as narrative literature review. It provides a quick overview of current studies. Three, this review synthesizes findings from different approaches and allows for the integration of qualitative with quantitative studies.
4. The following are characteristics of a good literature review. Exact. Five. The following are examples of secondary sources. Exact. Six. The first step in preparing a literature review is blank. Seven, a literature review provides an overview of what has been written about a specific topic. It can cover a range of sources. Except eight. The following purposes must be kept in mind as the researcher prepares and does the literature review. Except How did you fare in the activity? If you got all the correct answers, you are great! If not, I know you can do better. Let's assess how far you have learned the concept on selecting relevant literature. This is what you're going to do. Suppose you are going to conduct a study about mobile games addiction among senior high school students. Search at least three sources for the literature review. Then indicate the information from those resources that you deem relevant or related to the study. Accomplish the task by completing the table that is flashed on screen. When you're finished, Respectfully ask your parents or guardian to forward your output to your respective research teachers. Well done, students! You have reached the end of our session. If you want to watch this video lesson again, you may visit our YouTube channel. Search RLTV JepEd Leite. Click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to get the latest updates. Remember, Research empowers us with knowledge. It is through research that we get to understand and discover things. Again, this is your teacher, Jerry. Keep on researching. Keep on writing.